All right, thank you, Brooke. And I am here with the coaches. We're ready to go. Everybody is in their seats and ready. And I have Nikki Collin here right next to me. So you get the hot seat. I'm going to start with you. First of all, how are things going with your move into Waco and how's your family settling in? Um, my family situation is a little unique. Um, they are staying in Atlanta, at least for this year. Um, I'm building a house right now, so hopefully in it uh, by the new year. So a lot going on, but uh, kind of allowing their lacrosse and cheer and other things to take priority right now in Atlanta. And um, the, the squeaky shoes, are you wearing the shoes that are causing you to trip here today? or? No, uh, I, I don't think I'd ever go to practice in Jordans, but uh, definitely have learned to put those away. All right, well, we'll get back to you in a moment. We're sure glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. And from one of the newest coaches to one of the most veteran coaches here in Bill Fenley, I didn't say most old, uh, but Coach, as we look back to last year and uh, the exit from the NCAA tournament was a, a, a great game that you all played against Texas A&M, but it was a, a tough overtime loss. How long does a loss like that stick with you? How does it motivate the team in the off season and prepare you for this year? Well, it sticks with you forever, probably, uh, uh, at least with me. Um, I, I think it, it helped our players in the sense of, you know, as coaches, you're always talking about the next play, you know, what play is going to change the outcome of a game. And when you're playing a game like that where there were millions of plays that could have gone either way, uh, every day in our gym, 84-82 was on the scoreboard. Uh, we had T-shirts made, remember the Alamo, 84-82. Uh, so they, they understand, our kids understand that. So hopefully it, it was some extra motivation in the summertime uh, to, to understand that we all need to do one more thing, not one less thing. And, and uh, those one more, one less, not just changes the game, but for us, uh, ended a season in three seniors' careers. So hopefully it did uh, get their attention. You know, and, and as you put that 84-82 on the wall, I mean, you have some great leaders on your team. How have some of them stepped up to embrace that? No, they, they understand it. And I think, you know, when you walk out of that uh, facility and uh, your season's over and, and you learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about your teammates. Uh, we we have a lot of kids that, that understand or they're ultra competitive kids. You better be in this league every single day. Uh, but the goal is obviously to play in the NCAA tournament. We had a great experience. Uh, and anything great in life, you want it to go a little longer. Uh, that was the bad part for me is we didn't get to practice the next day. That, that was the thing that I think hits all of us. So uh, our kids have done a great job in the offseason, and hopefully uh, uh, we're going to be a little bit better for it. Coach Snyder, um, nine new players over the last two years. COVID affected everybody, everybody in the world, every basketball team, but maybe none as much as your team had to endure. And right before Christmas, you had four post players opt out for the season. So how have you addressed filling that position as you enter this year? Uh, well, we've, we've uh, added um, five new players to our team, uh, four frontline players, um, three of which you probably consider centers. Um, I think, uh, you know, with the, some of the, the issues and, and how COVID affected us and the opt outs, um, you know, we had good players really playing out of position, and I, I thought it impacted nobody more than uh, Joanna Hatsileonti, um, who made the all-freshman team but had to do it really playing out of position. So we're excited uh, to, to get players like her back playing their, their natural position and, and feel like um, it'll put us in a better position to be successful. And on, uh, oop, on to Coach Schaefer, but we, he's getting a microphone. So I'll go back to you, Brandon, before we move on. You, you've got players from so many different countries on your team. When you, when you look at you know, Greece, Macedonia, uh, Croatia, Greece, Sweden, Denmark, Quebec. I think I said Greece twice. Um, how many different, right there we go. <laughs> how many different languages are spoken and what kind of challenges does that bring to your team? Well, uh, a lot of different languages. I think um, we have a 17-year-old freshman um, who is an aerospace engineer major. She speaks uh, Greek, English, Spanish, and Russian. Um, uh, just a brilliant uh, young lady. But um, most of our, our international players obviously speak multiple languages. Uh, but uh, I think for, for any freshman, whether 
um, you know, they're from Kansas City or whether they're from Shibinit, Croatia, you're learning basketball language. Um, I think terminology always changes as, as, as you're bringing in players. And, um, you know, right now we're just trying to get all on the same page in terms of the, the basketball terminology and lingo that we use and uh, then just celebrate all the differences that we have and culturally, you know, in our locker room. Coach Schaefer, I think you have a microphone that works now, hopefully. Um, coming in as the head coach of Texas last year in the situation that you did and not having the opportunity to work with your team and develop relationships and, and work out in the off season, how rewarding was it uh, to make that run through the NCAA tournament to get the victories over UCLA and over Maryland? And, and what does that mean for, for your program? Uh, I was um, so happy for our kids and, and proud of them to to see the fruits of their labor. Um, it was difficult, you know. We we were way different than what they were used to um, in practice. Um, I remember in late January, you know, we just weren't very good. And uh, again, I didn't have five on five until you know middle of September, early September, and. Um, hard to build a relationship when you can't see somebody's face and um, you know we we're really you know again it's we have a saying it's not what we do but how we do it that allows us to be you know separate ourselves from the rest of the country and uh, it was sometimes it's just hard to get past hard for especially for young people and so <clears throat> but I told my staff I'm not giving up I'm not giving in um, we're gonna keep doing it our way um, I know our way works. If it doesn't pay off this year, it'll pay off in, in you know in years to come. And uh, I give our kids so much credit. Uh, you know, the two that are with me today, Joanne and, and Audrey. I mean, we just stayed after it, and we got we started getting better. And uh, probably uh, the the turning point was uh, the Valentine's Day massacre in Waco. We got beat 60 to 35. But we walked out of there realizing we could guard them. They were averaging almost 80 a, a game. And uh, I think our kids realized, OK, we're not going to beat anybody 90 to 80 or 80 to 78. We're going to have to try to hold people in the you know, 60s. And uh, maybe we can score enough to, to beat some folks. And, and we kind of embraced that. And uh, again, our kids just got better. And then the last thing is, don't ever underestimate what's inside somebody's breastplate. You start going on national TV and saying that somebody's going to hang a hundred on you. You, you, you better be careful. And uh, I think our kids took it real personal. When that's what was being said going into the, you know, after we after we beat UCLA and we're going to go play Maryland. Man, Maryland's really good. I mean, they're they were averaging 93 a game and they were really good offensively. But be careful. Kids, kids take that personal. I know my staff did, and, and I give our kids all the credit. It was uh, really fun to watch. Yeah. Krista, you were in the same situation going back home to Texas Tech last year during the COVID year. How much more have you been able to do with your team now this year that you get a whole season with them as you're, you're developing your players? Yeah, it's been nice to be able to just be with them and grow some relationships instead of just throwing them on the court and trying to figure out you know some X's and O's, but um, it's been it's been great. We've had a great summer and, and fall, and I think that our new kids have come in and really done a great job of of listening to our returners and seeing what the standard is that we're trying to set and to understand the history of Lady Raider basketball and where we want it to return to. So uh, it's been a lot of fun just working with them and um, you know just seeing just a different. Um, people that we bring in from different experiences. You know, they've all had some different experiences and they're bringing those in with the same goal. They all have the same goal. And it's really been just a, a great time to be back in Lubbock and to be back um, just around people that love Lady Raider basketball, that love women's basketball, and that really want to see us return to where it, it was years ago. And we're going to come back down and, and just have a few minutes left. We'll just kind of bounce through. But a lot of changes for Texas Tech. A, a lot of players out, a lot of players in. You have Vivian Gray back. You have Bryn Gerlich back. What can, what can fans expect? 
Well, I'm excited about our, our crew. I mean, they we've got kids that are really hungry and that um, all wanted to come in and, and just win. You know, they wanted to do it right and they wanted to win. They wanted to play together. And it's been fun to see them kind of put themselves aside and to put the team first. And I think that's been huge for us. And Coach Schaefer, your preseason pick tied with Iowa State for Big 12. You lost four starters from last year, but a lot of great new players. What are your expectations? We might need to hand him your microphone there. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> nice assist, you know, Brandon I'm, Schneider. I'm, a, I'm excited about our team. We do have seven new players. Over half of our team have six returners and um, I would say that Audrey and Joe are both uh, returners. Um, Audrey was in and out of the lineup a lot last year, and, and my job, I got to keep her in the lineup. Uh, but, you know, we got a, a really highly ranked uh, recruiting class. I think that was number three in the country, and um, I'm, I'm really expecting a lot from, from those kids. But then, you know, the leadership that Joe and Audrey are, are, are able to provide for us, I think, is going to carry us a long way. So. Uh, we're not going to change. We're just going to try to speed it up a little bit this year because I can't, I can't go through another year where it takes as long as it did a year ago. I might not make it. <laughs> and Coach Snyder, we'll have to hand over the microphone. Uh, Zakiah Franklin and Holly Kurzgeter are here with you today, and you have a lot of new players. They played significant minutes throughout their career. What kind of leadership are you expecting from them? Well, I think um, a lot. Uh, you know, both of them are... are uh, you know, quiet personalities, um, but uh, in, in particular, Zakaya, we're really trying to get her to be more vocal in practice, um, you know, being our point guard. I think that's a, a, a critical attribute that, um, you know, she has to take a lot of pride in. Coach Fenley, a Ashley Jones is one of the best and most unique scorers in the country. What did she have to work on in the offseason? And I've also heard that Lexi Donarski had a terrific offseason. She and Emily Ryan, those three are your leaders. What are your expectations? You know, I, I think any coach will tell you that when you have really good guards, you have a chance. And we have three really good guards. Uh, Ash can score. Uh, you don't want to play horse with her. She's got a game that is, is unique in the way she scores the ball. Uh, you can always get better, and, and all the great players want to lead your team farther. Uh, and, and, you know, with Emily and Lex, uh, they went through, like all the coaches talk about, uh, you know, the COVID year was, was very unique to start two freshman guards and not be able to do the extra stuff that you'd like to do. But uh, they've all had really good summers. Uh, they're ready to go. They're excited about it. And probably more than anything, they're excited to play at Hilton in front of some fans. Mm -hmm. That would be fun mm -hmm. for them. Uh, that You know, they, they expected that and didn't get to see it. And hopefully they'll have some kind of normalcy in their COVID freshman year. Yeah. We're all looking forward to fans this year, right? Nikki, let's let's wrap it up, and we'll be talking to you later as well. But, you know, coming into a situation where Baylor has won so many championships in the Big 12 in a row, you know, what kind of pressure do you feel to continue that excellence level at Baylor? Certainly a lot of pressure, um, but I didn't take the job expecting there not to be pressure. I think everyone on this stage puts a lot of pressure on themselves to be successful. So what that looks like, I don't think pressure from the outside is any different than you're going to place um, on yourself on the inside to do things the right way. Um, you know, our goal is to, to play the way that, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a new brand of basketball. It's not going to look the same. It's not going to feel the same. Um, do we hope that that the results are the same, absolutely. Um, but, uh, you know, we're just going to do it our, our way, one day at a time, and, and hope the results show. All right, we have more time than I thought. I thought I was getting the wrap-up signal a while ago, but we have some more time, so we're good. So, you know, you come into a situation where you have last year's Wade Trophy winner in Melissa Smith and Queen Egbo inside and a couple of really impactful transfers coming in. You know, as, as you, your new coaching staff, you've got new players, everybody coming together. You know, how does that all work together? How's it gone so far? And, you know, where are you at right now where you, uh, compared to where you want to be? 
Well, I think, um, you know, when you spend five years in the WNBA and you average 12 practices before your first game uh, with training camp and you have to limit the load, you, you really have to load manage at that level. You know, I saw, certainly thought 30 practices in 42 days was going to seem like a lot. Um, but what you realize is there's so much teaching to do and there are so many components um, that you don't work at um, at that level and you're talking whether it's zone offense, um, you know, press offense, all of those things that you don't see a lot at the next level. I think there are, I think we're building day by day. I think we're further ahead offensively probably than we are defensively, um, relying on the fact that Baylor's always been a tremendous defensive team and have had that mentality of the biggest change for them is on the offensive side of the ball and playing pick and roll offense and spacing and cutting and movement and, and all of that stuff. So, you know, I think they've made great strides. I think they enjoy it. I think they're having fun playing. Um, but we certainly have a lot of work to do before we tip off in November. It's uh, right around the corner for right. sure. <laughs> Coach Finley, um, we talked about your guard play. Uh, you lose Kristen Scott from last year. What are you looking to do to replace that position? What's your post position going to look like this year? Uh, it'll be very different. Uh, Kristen was a hard matchup for a lot of people. You know, she was, you know, picking and popping, and we don't have that. So we, we have four post players um, that, that are getting equal minutes in practice, and it'll be done by committee. And whoever shows up that night's going to play. And uh, it's just the way it is. It'll be different than what we've done in the past. But that means the, the returning players, our guards, have to help them. Because, you know, your returning players are the ones that are key, obviously. So our experience is not in the post. Uh, it's a college basketball year where old and experience is good, and we are neither. <laughs> uh, you know, with the COVID year, there's there, there'll be kids playing in this league. They've been in this league as long as I have, I think. So um, it's just, you got to get through that as best you can. And uh, our kids have done a good job in practice. And obviously that, hopefully that translates to the, to the game uh, three weeks from today. Uh, unbelievable. Wow. We get to start. That's fantastic. We've all been looking forward to it for sure. Uh, Coach Snyder, we talked about uh, Kurzgeter and Franklin, but the, the players around them and, and meshing everybody and getting everybody to do what you need them to do, kind of what's your, your where are you at right now as you prepare for the season and what are your goals as you go through November and December and grow this team? Well, I think just trying to, uh, you know, develop some chemistry and, and uh, continue to focus on uh, defending the culture every day, you know, for us, we felt like there were some real holes in our roster. Um, I feel uh, that our staff has done a good job in filling those holes. So, you know, beyond that, it's trying to stay healthy, uh, develop the right type of chemistry and culture on a daily basis. Um, I do think we have a player that uh, in Tiana Jackson that's new to our team, uh, junior college transfer from Trinity Valley that provides us something that we haven't had in my time at Kansas with some length and some, uh, you know, shot blocking presence, paint protection. Uh, but we, we, we think we can also throw her the ball, and, and we definitely have not had that at, at, uh, at KU's, the ability to, to throw the ball inside and try to get a basket. Coach Schaefer, I don't know if your microphone's working yet or not, but again, the assist from Coach Snyder. Thank you. Uh, you know, we, we talked about Audrey and Joanne as your veterans. Aaliyah Moore was named preseason freshman of the year, so obviously the, the other coaches know about her. Fans may not as much. Can you just describe her game and what she's going to be, bring to the Big 12 and nationwide? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Aaliyah's a, a very versatile player, um, can stretch you. Um, <clears throat> obviously can finish inside as well. Um, kid just works her, her tail off. She just plays really, really hard, very coachable. Um, you know, when you're coaching her, she's looking at looking you in the eye and responding. And um, it's why she's been two-time Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, we've got, you know, Rory Harmon and Kendall Hunter. Both of those kids have been Gatorade Player of the Year out of Texas. And, you know, those three were, were kind of the 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 foundation of that class. Then we were fortunate enough to add Latasha Lattimore late out of Canada. It was a top 20 kid. So those four freshmen are really special and work really hard, great kids. Um, and, and so all those kids are gonna be fun to watch. They're, they're really skilled, really talented. Um, our job's to get them ready. Krista, 
we talked earlier about you going back home, back where you won a national championship as a player, and you know that's really home for you in a lot of way. What kind of support have you gotten from the fans, from alums, a as you've come back during this past year? A lot. I mean, it's been really nice to be home and be back where basketball is important. Um, you know, West Texas loves their women's basketball, and, and they certainly want us to help put it back on the map. You know, and I think that we have got um, a roster full of kids who will help us do that. You know, I think Vivian Gray has... Um, you know, put herself in a situation to come back and to really um, put herself in, in. Yep, we might need to pass a microphone down. Oh, right. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, <laughs> thanks, Brendan. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I think Vivian's put herself in a situation where she can be in the talks for, you know, one of the best two-way players in the nation. I mean, I, that, she brings it every single day, and, and we've added players like Taylor Thomas, who comes in and, and has a lot of experience, who can, who can really defend and, and rebound the basketball. And we've just added kids that, that want – that, that represent the same thing that, that West Texas represents, which is hard work and, and championships and, um, and just that desire to, um, you know, to, to, to put Lady Raiders um, back to where they were. And, and it's just fun to see that because I know that's how it was when I was there. And, you know, that was a long time ago, but, um, but, but the, the same pride is still there and the same passion is still there. And as you have, we talked about the new players coming in. What do you have to do to build chemistry and get ready for the season? Yeah, well, we got to spend time with each other. You know, you got to build those relationships and learn each other, learn about each other off the court. And I think we do a really good job of that, of trying to put them in situations to um, really ask each other, you know, about their personal lives and where they grew up and what what made them choose Texas Tech and what does their ex past experience bring to the table. And so, I think those types of things help us be, bring that chemistry and build that chemistry. I also think that just learning about the tradition of Texas Tech has helped them um, understand the expectations that are there and you know we just continue to talk to them every day about um, just the standard that we want to set and how we want to bring bring that work ethic every day to school uh, every day to, to work out and you know and that they want to love each other in the way that that only really great champions can do you know that's what that chemistry can do for you. Coach Schaefer, um, you know, the University of Texas ha has played Tennessee and Stanford in non-conference for as long as I can remember. But now you're adding to that Arizona. So you're playing the two teams that played in the national championship game last year in your non-conference schedule. Uh, and the uh, Big 12 SEC Challenge, you know, has obviously has some uh, – people that have a sense of humor. We've got Iowa State, get to go play LSU. So Bill Finley gets to see Kim Mulkey again down at LSU. You get to go back and play Gary Blair at A&M. Uh, just talk about that non-conference schedule and how important that is as it prepares you for Big 12 play. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's concerning. Um, just working? There, there we, we go. go, there we go. I said it's concerning, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a monster. I'd like to talk to the coach who scheduled it, but I wouldn't have to go very far. Um, you know, it's it's an opportunity. Uh, it's how we look at it. You know, we're going to play Stanford the second game of the year on on uh, ESPN. Um, going to play Tennessee on ESPN. Going to play A&M on the SEC Network, and going to play uh, Arizona on ESPN. And all those are going to be great opportunities for us to to evaluate ourselves where we are in each time, each particular times of the season. And, um, you know, our kids are excited about it. We welcome the challenge. Um, it'd be real easy to go schedule a bunch of three-name directional schools and, and, and give yourself some real false sense of security. But I think when you go play those folks, um, you, you get a real evaluation of who you are. And, and again, it's, it's kind of the history of Texas. You know, those schools that you mentioned, um, that's who they play every year. You know, Tennessee and Stanford's kind of been the, the, the way it's been forever. A&M at one time was. And so the opportunity to go play Arizona on a neutral floor in, in Vegas with our men. Our men are playing Stanford and then we're, we're playing after them. It just was an opportunity that I felt like, you know, we needed to, to go ahead and, and step in and accept the challenge. So. I'm excited about it. I think our kids are too. I kept kind of telling Joe and, and Audrey throughout the course of the summer, hey, what do you think about this? We've got this opportunity. And 
you know, they're like, coach, let's go. You know, they, at the end of the day, kids want to play in those kind of games. You know, they, they do. They want to be in that environment. And uh, you know what I do too. All right, switching gears a little bit. Brandon, I saw your outfit for a late night and was kind of intrigued by it. But did you get to meet Run DMC? We did spend a little time with Run DMC. Yeah? Yeah, no, I was probably the only one who, um, that was my era. So uh, we knew the songs and um, it, was a, it was a great opportunity, I guess, for me personally to, to be able to con connect with them and, and take a couple of pictures. Awesome. And, and just real, real quickly, I would like to make sure we mention, you know, there's so much history in all of your programs, but you're doing something special to honor Coach Marion Washington this fall. So can you, uh, can you share that? Well, I think, um, you know, Coach Washington was such a trailblazer, and, and um, I go back to um, just, you know, the, the way I grew up and, and uh, you know, being a coach's kid. And uh, my dad was, was friends with so many others that, uh, that, that really helped elevate the game of women's basketball. And, and um, I, I coached at Stephen F. Austin, where Sue Gunner was such a big figure. And um, we just felt like it was really necessary to to honor Coach Washington in, in any way that we could and continue to connect, um, you know, the, the, the great heritage of our program during her time there and, and uh, the past players with the current players. And um, so we've made some renovations to our, oh, I don't know, I don't guess any of us really have locker rooms anymore, but our, our suite area, um, we're, we're going to dedicate that and name that after her um, later this week. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you coaches. I know you have other interviews to get to today. So thank you. Looking forward to the season, seeing us all back in the court with the fans. And I'm going to throw it back over to the studio on Brooke.